Welcome everyone to Andover Academy. This particular video is for those current Andover students who would like to transfer to Andover Academy for this coming school year 2020-2021. I'm going to give this presentation as I would anybody, but there may be some things that are specific to Andover families, but I wanted to welcome you. I wanna show you what our vision is for Andover Academy. We provide a student-centered, connective, innovative, environment. Um, we worked on this vision last year. We are part of Kansas Redesign as we are doing some amazing things here at our school and we're going to continue to do those things as well. To meet our staff, um, I'm going to go over the next few slides a little quickly, but you can visit our website at andoveracademy.org and get to know our staff a little bit better that way. This staff is going to change probably a little bit before August comes since we um, have this kind of extended registration date. So just bear with me here, but I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you to important people here. Mr. Templin is our school principal, and we also have two counselors. One counselor works solely with juniors and seniors, and one works with kindergarten through 10th grade. Uh, the nice thing about having our two counselors is they meet personally with every single um, high school student, but in this case, we will match your courses that you already pre-enrolled in as best we can to our courses here at Academy. We also have a great support staff, including some great office ladies, a registrar. We have a, tech, um, a technician as well, um, and an admissions coordinator, and you may hear from her as well. There's me, Kim Head, who's the technology and teacher leader here at Academy. Um, this is my 26th year in the district, and I started Academy with another teacher um, about 11 years ago. And so every year we get better, and I'm very passionate about this job. Hopefully you can tell that, and um, can't wait to show you what our school does here in a second. We also have a fabulous special education team that includes Mrs. Heidi, our special education teachers, and four incredible pair of professionals. Our elementary staff, as of now, will have four full-time teachers. We try to keep our elementary numbers um, as close to around 25 as possible for each individual teacher because we spend so much time with the families. So we try to keep that a pretty normal, traditional um, classroom size, basically. We also have four middle school staff, um, a science teacher, social studies teacher, English, and math. And then we have a bunch of high school staff that teaches the course subjects as well as many electives. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about who we are. We are a kindergarten through 12th grade blended virtual school, which means that part of the instruction is given online, but we also have that ability to come in house. Um, we are available actually to everyone in the state of Kansas um, except for uh, this time, we're just, this is just for our Andover kiddos, um, but we are part of the Andover School District still. We are NCAA certified. All of our teachers are licensed and actually are here in the building five days a week. Um, students who graduate from Academy do so with a, an Andover diploma, and we also participate in all the district-wide assessments and so forth. All of the teachers also participate in all of the professional development, and we do follow the Andover calendar. So what makes us different? Well, we provide an environment that kind of blends homeschool, virtual school, and traditional school all together. Um, and so it makes us a very unique school in that we're a really good option during this time of COVID-19. We usually bring in just small groups of kids um, and we will have safety precautions put in place as well, um, but we also provide the online instruction and material too. So the kids can learn at home, they can also come in and have the opportunities to do that as well. Um, I do want to say that all of our in-house type activities are optional. Um, but we do have some things that are mandatory, such as high school finals need to be proctored by a teacher, but that also could mean we could proctor it online. Um, so don't worry about that quite yet. But that was, that's what makes us a little bit different. So I'm gonna go through the curriculum and I'm doing this um, kindergarten through 12th grade, but I want you to see the progression of the students and the learning coaches responsibilities throughout. Um, and I also want you to know that we do a lot together. Um, and what I mean by that is teachers really collaborate 
all together. So if I teach fifth grade, I'm collaborating with middle school teachers and high school teachers um, just because there's great things that we can all share with each other. Um, students also have the opportunity to work together um, cross grade level. For example, we have high school students that mentor some middle school students. We have our high school teachers that will come in and do science experiments with our elementary kids. So it's, it's kind of like one big family, um, which I think is kind of neat. So let me go through the curriculum. At kindergarten through second grade, we use something called Lincoln Interactive or Little Lincoln. It's a great interactive type um, program and the students get to create their own avatar. They get to go through this magical world of Midlandia and it's a lot of fun. It's pretty rigorous so the teachers have to modify it down just a little bit depending on the student um, but it is it is a great little program. What's cool about it is every student also receives a box of materials and the materials include readers, flashcards, math manipulatives, all of the um, workbooks and things like that. So there's a lot offline that the elementary students will do along with the virtual part of it. In through third through fifth grade, we use journeys for our reading, which is what the rest of the district uses. So that won't be much of a transition. However, we've converted it to online learning. So, um, so this, the teachers will be doing a lot of teaching within that, but you'll be responsible for really following, and when I say you, I mean the learning coach or whoever's going to be at home with them. You're really responsible for, for providing that instruction at home, um, and then teachers will help you as needed. For math, we do something called Go Math, which is also a Houghton Mifflin product. It's a lot more virtual as far as um, interactive. It has um, a lot of tutorials that are done by little creatures like salamanders and things like that. And it's a lot of fun. And the students can practice offline while they're watching it. So um, independent students can really watch some of those videos and actually do a lot of it on their own. In science and social studies, that was all teacher created. We did that because we know those big thick science books and social studies books are too much for any kind of eight to 10 year old to remember all of those things. So what the teachers did is we took what um, Andover Scope and Sequin is, we took this next generation science standards and the state's um, social studies standards, and we really kind of honed in um, regionally as well as what was the most important strands to teach and we created um, a program or a course on our own. It's very project based. There are some projects in there. There are some um, products as well that they will produce um, and lots of good videos um, from the History Channel and from all over. So we're really proud of our, our science and social studies courses. At the elementary level, we use something called Schoology third through fifth. It is a learning management system. You can see a calendar in there, the grade books in there, the email system, everything is inside of this one system. And that's the same from K to 12. Third through fifth grade just has a different one. They use uh, Schoology and then the rest of the school uses uh, Jillix Buzz. And we'll kind of go over that here in a minute. At the elementary level, the teachers do provide some mandatory live lessons in, science, or in math and reading. Those are differentiated usually by what the students need as far as standard-wise. Those are in small groups and it's given over Zoom, just like this. Your uh, teachers during continuous learning probably had some Zoom sessions with you and it's very similar, um, but our teachers can also use the document camera can also do some interactive whiteboard lessons and things like that. So those are usually twice a week, but we won't worry about those until later, um, probably September, because we wanna get you used to this and kind of talk you through that first month of school. So the learning coach expectations, as I said, are different and kind of evolved kindergarten through 12th grade. At the elementary level, it is imperative that it that a parent or what we call a learning coach, and it could be a grandma or someone else staying home with them, is at home with them and able to provide the teaching. Uh, so you are the main, or I should say the main facilitator of learning. So it's really important that you're home. It's very important that you have a job that won't necessarily interfere, like a daycare center would be one. If you're running a daycare center out of your home, it's gonna be very difficult to give the time needed for your child. 
But we also know that this is flexible. So when I say that, I mean, if you maybe work in the mornings, but not the afternoons, your child can work in the afternoons with you, just so there's somebody that can provide the instruction and answer questions for that student since the teacher can't always be there. Um, an average student, and this is first grade through 12th grade, will take four to six hours a day in their learning if they do the activities that are assigned to them appropriately. That doesn't mean that there might be some students that take only a couple of hours. If so, you can move on to the next day. Or some students may take longer, but please communicate with your teacher because we don't want anybody doing school for 10 hours a day either. So this is very different than continuous learning that happened in the spring, and I want to be very clear about that. Our expectations are high, our curriculum is pretty rigorous, and so we want to make sure that they're getting everything that they need to in order to be successful, okay? And please work with your teachers. Communication is going to be huge when it comes to this blended virtual model, okay? Uh, we don't, as a matter of fact, you'll see us almost over communicate. There aren't things like Friday folders or anything like that. It's almost a daily, uh, weekly, every other day, whatever we feel like we need communication with you, okay? Um, please reply to all forms of school communication. Our main form of communication, and this isn't just for elementary, this is everybody, is going to be email, okay? But we're always available here at the school and you can call us or whatever you need to, okay? So the blended part of elementary is we do monthly field trips. Hopefully those will be allowed with maybe some safety precautions in place, whether we have to wear masks or not. Again, we probably won't plan any field trips until a little bit later in the fall, but we do monthly field trips. And what's cool about it is we not only tie it to what we're learning about, but we also, um, we also invite families so the whole family can come to those. In-house days, we usually try to split those up uh, depending on the age, and sometimes we do whole K-5 days. But those days are pretty neat. They'll come to the school and kind of have a traditional day of school, but it's only from nine to two. They'll bring their lunch with them since we don't have a cafeteria and we'll do some great activities. What's great about in-house days is that all four teachers are there. So we can split them up in small groups. We're doing some co-teaching and the kids get to know all of the teachers no matter what grade level they're in. Um, again, that may look a little different this year in that we may have to have more in-house days with fewer students. So just be patient with us and we will try to get those scheduled. Again, these are all optional. So if you don't feel comfortable coming in, you certainly don't have to, but we do love seeing the kids. We also have club days. Last year was great. We had Andover High School students, uh, Spanish five students come and, and teach our kids, our little kids Spanish. We also had Arts and Crafts Club and a Lego Club that's very popular. So we do have those opportunities for kids to not only come in and socialize, but also work collaboratively with one another. So at the middle school, the students will be enrolled in their four core classes as well as some electives. Electives might include health, uh, computer applications, and there's also something called a, gener a Generation Me course, which is, is pretty cool. Um, everything's going to be in Agilix Buzz, and again, that's just one learning management system, so you don't have to go out and click out and go all to all these places. Everything will be right there, okay? Blended learning for middle school is kind of similar to elementary, but middle school comes in a couple of days a week if they want to. They also have clubs and field trips. And they, we try to do some of the same things that a traditional school does, like we will have a fifth grade promotion, an eighth grade promotion, some honor roll awards and things like that, because we don't want those kids missing out on some of those traditional opportunities. Middle school also, like I said, does field trips. Uh, they try to do one once a month. And then at the high school level, still same expectations as Andover. You, of course, need 25 credits to graduate. You'll be in the core courses as well as all of your electives. Again, we're going to try to match um, whatever you pre-register for, we're gonna try to match with that course. If nothing matches, you'll work with your counselor. The counselor will call you, you'll work one-on-one -on -one with them, and we'll provide you some other electives if needed, okay? 
uh, do know too that we're not going to be sharing students. We do have a couple of students that are already grandfathered in, but since we decided to open this up as a safety precaution for our Andover families, we're not going to be able to share students. And what that means is you're not gonna be able to go to Andover Central and play, um, and play uh, basketball and take one course there, but then take your rest here. If you're doing this strictly for COVID reasons, then we're not gonna be able to share. There's a lot of reasons behind that, and it's usually the back end, uh, but please know, we want you to stay with us for this year. I think you're gonna find it, um, I think you're gonna have great opportunity and, and, and you're just gonna find it that it's really kind of nice. Uh, you're not gonna have those other kinds of distractions around you. You'll be able to focus on your schoolwork probably a little bit more. Um, I don't want you to also feel like you're missing out on anything. We've had dances before. We don't know again what that's gonna look like with the guidelines. Um, however, you know, we've ha we had a high school dance last year and it was only about 30 kids, but it was great and it was a lot of fun. So we don't want you to think you're missing out on too much. We will try to do whatever we can to make this a great experience for you. But again, we're just gonna have to follow some of those safety measures, okay? So with the high school learning and middle school, I should say with everybody, every, everything's gonna be in one learning management system, like I said. So you don't go have to go out and use your email for something else. Everything's gonna be within there. Your tests, your quizzes, everything. We don't even provide report cards or progress reports because parents are gonna be able to see absolutely everything that you do. Um, and students, you're gonna get a lot of instant feedback or you're gonna wait for your teacher to give you some really quality good feedback. So um, we really pride ourselves in getting everything graded 24 to 48 hours. That isn't always possible, especially if we have projects or essays to grade. But um, there are some kinds of quizzes that are graded automatically by the computer, so you get an automatic grade. What's great about our system is that you can also see exactly what questions you missed. A lot of times it'll tell you the right answer. Um, there are times too, and this is great, that we'll be able to see how much time was spent on your assignments and quizzes. So um, if you accidentally bomb a test or something and we see and mom and or dad or grandma and, and the teachers see that you only spent about 30 seconds on the test, then we're gonna have a conversation with you about that or with your student about that. And so um, there's really, we always have this saying, there's no lying at Academy because we're really watching almost everything that you, can, that you do. But that's for your own good. We wanna protect you. Uh, with that said, we also have the mobile filter on our school computers. So it's not impossible to get to blocked sites, but we do have quite a few things blocked. Um, and we also get uh, a daily readout of the types of things that students will try to um, search for, okay? Orientation is big. Orientation is mandatory for all of our parents as well as our students. That's in August. We don't have those dates yet set because we're gonna really take our time transitioning you all to Academy. So we may have a few weeks of orientations and then we'll get started with school, um, but orientations are very important. You'll come into the building. We will also provide some online ones as well, um, but we want as, as many people to come into the building as possible. When I say that, I don't mean we're still gonna follow the safety procedures, but as far as a whole, um, the universal, we would love to see you in person rather than do it online. So um, as soon as we get these specific guidelines, then we will provide some in-house orientations, which are great. Uh, live lessons, even though elementary makes our kids do live lessons twice a week at the middle and high school, it's a little bit different. Some live lessons are already pre-recorded by teachers and the students will watch or teachers will schedule something with you or you can schedule something with your teacher to do a live lesson with. So it could be just a one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe you're having a problem in social studies or your government class and you want to meet with the teacher so you schedule a time and they will meet with you, okay? So let's go ahead and move on. We also have a, a space for high school students to come in called the eCafe. It's open Monday through Thursday. Fridays only by appointment usually. Again, we don't know how many kids we're going to allow at the eCafe at a time, so there may be kind of a sign-up sheet, and you may wanna come in once a week. You may wanna come in a couple times a week, and that's fine. 
But what's great is you can come to this kind of comfy place and put in your earbuds, do some of your work. There's always a teacher in there. And what's cool is that you can sign up and get help from a teacher and usually they're right next door and they can pull you and work one-on-one -on -one with you, okay? So we kind of set this up as kind of a study place. There's also some socialization that happens during that time as well and that's totally fine. Um, and there's also some coffee and hot chocolate that you can purchase. So it's kind of a fun little place to go. So secondary student expectations. At the elementary level, the learning coach or the parent, whoever's gonna be at home with them, is very, very, very involved. As the kids get a little bit older, the parent kind of steps back a little bit, okay? It really depends on the maturity of your student and how academically they can handle it um, and their motivation. By the time they're in high school, we really want that parent to step back and really have that student take agency over their learning. With that said, we still need the parent involved. You are kind of like the assistant principal. You're there to make sure that those students are motivated, they're up out of bed, they're communicating with their teachers, um, all of that. So that's still, the parent is still involved, just maybe not as involved as they were when they were second graders, okay? So the students' expectations, you need to communicate with your teachers, okay? We all know life happens. And so if you are sick or if somebody passed away or something happened, just communicate that with your teacher and we will work with you, okay? Um, you need to demonstrate organization and follow through with coursework. Submit assignments in a timely manner. That's really important. Yes, we are a flexible learning environment. However, we're still gonna have due dates. Why? Because that's a life skill. Your boss is going to expect things done on time. Your professors are going to expect things done on time. Whatever you do in your adult life, there are going to be due dates. So those may be a little more flexible than in the traditional environment, but there are going to be dates where you can't submit anymore and you'll get a zero, okay? Um, also maintaining a consistent school schedule. It's really important that consistency happens, okay? In other words, um, you may do really well in the morning, so you may wanna really work between eight and noon and be done for the day, and that's fine. But try to make it eight to noon on a daily basis. Some people may not work until the afternoon. Again, that's totally fine, but keep it more consistent. We find, after doing this for a decade, we've learned a lot, and we find that if a student has a consistent schedule, they tend to be more successful, okay? Also, make sure you participate in district and state assessment, and we do have an attendance policy. It depends on how many assignments are done as well as how often a student actually gets online. So I wanna talk about that just a little bit. We have to adhere to truancy laws just like a traditional school would. It is a little more difficult for us to do that, but there are ways to do that. But I also want to be clear that at the, the amount of work online varies from grade level to grade level. At the kindergarten level, they may spend 20% of their time online. Most of it's gonna be offline work, okay? Assignments are submitted through the learning management system. We have people take digital screenshots. We have people bring in assignments and your teacher will work with you on how they want things submitted. But the time online varies. So by the time they get to sixth grade, everything, all of the instruction is online, but there's still gonna be some offline work too. Your students shouldn't be sitting in front of a computer for six hours a day. There are going to be things that they do offline, such as reading a novel or doing, uh, completing a project or, or following along with a virtual science lab. So there are gonna be things that they're going to do offline as well. But I wanted to make that clear that the instructional part of it, starting in sixth grade, is all online, okay? And with the attendance policy, again, we're just gonna look at the a number of assignments, how far they are behind, and we also look at have they been logging in on a daily basis. All of this will be explained at orientation again. I know I'm going over this quickly because there's a lot to go over, but all of this will be explained during orientation. So what can you expect from us? We provide the guidance and support for the online curriculum. We know that most of the parents that are doing this aren't necessarily trained teachers. It doesn't mean that you don't know the content, it's just 
you may not have those instructional strategies in your pocket like a teacher does. So please communicate with us and we will help you with that. We're also responsible for grading all of the assignments that are automatically graded by the computer. We monitor student progress at the um, high school level. Every student will be assigned a homeroom and that homeroom teacher, which usually they usually have about 25 students at the most, will really build relationships with those kids and make sure that they are on track. Okay, we need the parents to still make sure that they're doing that, but there will be that extra support during their homeroom. We will also provide resources and support for students with intervention plans, IEPs, and 504s. We will offer live lessons, we'll plan the in-house days and field trips, and we will design plans for success for those not engaged. This really has to do with middle and high school, mostly high school. If we see that a student is really behind, and once you get behind, it's easy to really dig yourself a hole. But we're gonna hopefully stop <laughs> that student from doing that before it gets too deep, okay? And we're gonna work with that student. And that may mean coming in, working with a homeroom teacher or working with a student success um, teacher and developing a plan. And that could be looking at a calendar, making sure that you get caught up with everything, whatever it takes for that child. So the expectations from the family is to provide some sort of workspace at home. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Some kids are very successful sitting at the kitchen table during their work. Um, I will say it's probably not the best to be uh, lying down on the couch or um, watching TV while you're doing your work, but try to find a space away from distraction, okay? Keeping a consistent work schedule, four to six hours a day, five days a week is what it's gonna to take to get through the courses. Again, that's for an average student and that's doing everything. So the students may take you know, a little bit sh a shorter time, they may take a longer time. Please communicate with your teacher. If a student is done in an hour, your teacher needs to know that because we may need to provide some enrichment. We may need to put them in a different course. So we don't want the students to be at home doing nothing um, and only spending an hour at a time doing their schoolwork, okay? This is just as rigorous as a traditional environment, but I think it's a little bit harder because you have to manage your time. So please work with your teachers. Uh, check the progress daily, and again, communication is key. We are available through um, email, phone calls, face-to-face -face meetings, whatever you need. And again, we're going to work together to do all of this to provide the best education possible for your child. We also hope to give you some learning coach workshops. This is mostly for the elementary because they're gonna be providing the, the bulk of the instruction at home, but certainly we're gonna provide some learning coach workshops for middle school and high school parents as well. You may need some help with how to manage behaviors at home or how to uh, provide a consistent schedule or something like that. So we're going to provide, it's basically like a professional development day for the families and they can come in and we will plan that for you and maybe give you some things, resources to take home with you. At the elementary level, we may um, help with some writing strategies or some math strategies or something like that. Okay, so just be on the lookout for those. Those are going to be optional as well. So fees and technology, we just have a one-time technology fee of $40, that's it. There are no textbook fees or anything like that. So this is um, a little less expensive than uh, the other schools, but we are able to do that. And so your student will also receive a computer unless they already have a uh, Chromebook. We are gonna work all of that out. So I'm not gonna really say exactly <laughs> right now because um, the tech department and our principal is still kind of working things out on how that's going to work. So I'm not sure if the student's going to bring their, if you're a high school student, I'm not sure if they're going to, you're going to get to bring your own Chromebook with you or what. So there's lots of things to work out in the next few weeks. But I just wanted to provide an opportunity for you to see exactly what Academy does. Um, I just wanted to make it very clear that this is not necessarily an easy option but it is a more flexible option. So that's why we're here and we cannot wait to see everybody. Hopefully we'll be able to see everybody. But here's another thing. If you are interested in coming to us, it is imperative that you complete online an online application at this point, okay? So when you go to our website, 
you're going to have this apply button up here. Just click on that. And make sure that you click on this one that says Andover in district form. Okay, so go ahead and do that as soon as you possibly can. Remember that the enrollment date is uh, the end date is August 3rd for coming to Academy and you will be with us for the year. We would love to keep you if you want to if you want to stay with Academy, we would love to keep you and hopefully in the year 2021, 20, 22, everything will kind of be back to normal and you can go back to school. Uh, to go back to your traditional school. So whatever you do, we we wish you the best success and welcome to the Andover Academy family.